Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast, Dragon Ball edition. Today we are going to be going over Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 74 titled Vegeta vs. Granola. And we have our Dragon Ball expert with us, Mitchell Oso. How are you doing today, sir? Doing well, sir. Ready to jump in this chapter whenever you are, but uh, how how are you doing today? I am doing good, man. This was a big Big chapter. I know last time we spoke last month, I was nervous for this chapter because I thought this was going to be Vegeta's end. And that was far from the truth. Yep. Yep. Well, let's uh, let's dive into it uh, and get a little nitpicky and start talking about what we like. And uh, um, I'll do the summary of this go around. I think my uh, computer can uh, support me uh, this go around, unlike last month. So Sounds chapter good. starts off. And we're looking at the uh, Cerulians. They're evacuating their city because of the, uh, you know, the fighting going on involving Granola. And um, that's just the first panel. But it it shows um, Vegeta and Granola. And they're talking, of course. And um, Vegeta mentions to Granola um, tricks like fusion and clones won't work against him because of the force um, spirit fission that Mm -hmm. Vegeta learned in the previous arc. Uh, Granola says he doesn't need it. He was only using that clone to save his energy against Frieza. And Vegeta remarks that the Sands are not part of Frieza's army. Uh, they haven't been with them in a long time. Essentially, that they're enemies. Granola doesn't believe them, even though Oatmeal, um, and as uh, for a refresher for anyone else, Oatmeal is... Granola's assistant or partner. We've never seen Oatmeal actually in character, but Oatmeal's always talking in his earpiece. And, um, well, Granola, after Vegeta admits that he's not part of Frieza's crew anymore, mocks Vegeta, saying that he, you know, is throwing his boss under the bus and they're pathetic and blah, blah, blah. Oatmeal says, um, the other Saiyan said that uh, they weren't evil either um could that be the case granola says they're just trying to save their own ass so there's that um vegeta um, brushes off his remarks telling him to think whatever he'd like but he was a kid whenever the saiyans invaded the planet he had nothing to do with it granola doesn't care he's going to kill all the saiyans that he can and vegeta says that that's what he would expect Um, And he's not going to hold back instantly um, powers up and unleashes a attack on Granola. He attacks the ground and just kind of just explodes the uh, area all around Granola. Pretty big attack. And um, and a shockwave can be seen from miles away. Uh, Cerulean's running away. Their cars get shook, even though they're even further away than uh, the other panels. and. Granola uh, flies up behind Vegeta, makes the remark that his power is lacking, so he must make up with it in quantity. Um, Interesting verbiage there. And Granola says, let me demonstrate um, the power gap between them. And uh, Granola picks up Earth behind Vegeta and explodes it. And this blast throws Vegeta towards Granola, and then Granola just winds up a punch and punches Vegeta right in his gut. It's actually pretty sweet. Um, Vegeta stands there, quickly composes himself, and then tries to blast Granola with a shot or an energy blast. Granola jumps out of the way. Vegeta takes flight, and they're fighting in midair. Um, Granola is dodging some attacks, kicks Vegeta into a river, um, pretty pretty cool artwork that we got here, and they keep fighting, they keep duking it out, and um, Vegeta's kind of like Vegeta has his back against the wall. He's not really doing anything extravagant. He's just basically blocking and trying to survive. But he gets punched in the face, gets launched down the river, and Granola then proceeds to try to blast him with a whole bunch of key attacks. Um, misses Vegeta every time. And um, uh, Vegeta is underwater and he escapes 
um, uh, the, the river just for a short amount of time because it turns into a waterfall. Vegeta gets um, it back into the river and he zips on down the river. But Granola thinks that Vegeta is at the base of the river. So he's just blasting away at the wrong spot. And then he realizes that Vegeta got away and using his eye that he has, that mechanical eye that he has, um, him and Oatmeal or Oatmeal offers an aim assist on this, you know, sniper shot that Granola is going to do. And it's actually kind of a cool technique. Granola has his right hand out pointed kind of like a, like he has his finger shaped like a gun. And then his left hand is behind his head also in shape of a gun, but it's kind of like if you were pulling back like a bow and arrow, it's kind of what it looks like. And, um, and then right when Vegeta gets right up close to a lake, um, Granola lets off the shot and uh, it hits Vegeta um, right in the chest, but Vegeta had turned to block it. And um, the explosion goes off. Um, and Vegeta was able to successfully block it. Granola is surprised that Vegeta's not dead. Uh, he makes a remark that um, Sands are stronger than he expected, just as he said with Goku. And Vegeta taunts him, you know, saying, you still sound awfully high and mighty about it. And, um, and he says, why wouldn't I? Um, he's the strongest in the universe. And um, then Granola mocks, Vegeta saying that the struggle is pointless. And Vegeta looks at him and says, I admit that at the moment, um, Granola surpasses him, but he's still going to win. Not understanding why Granola um, says, I, I don't understand. I don't follow. You're really, you know, you're really arrogant. And then Vegeta says, let's just keep fighting then. So, the, the panels then go to uh, Goku, who uh, regains consciousness. And um, when he regains consciousness, he realizes how uh, how much in pain he was from Granola's uh, chest shot. And um, he sits up and uh, he sees Goku or uh, Vegeta and Granola flying around fighting still. And uh, Gr Granola still... Still was kicking Vegeta around and whatnot. Vegeta tries to blast him. It doesn't really do anything. And uh, he does blast, send one blast that kind of pisses Granola off. And then he tries to get behind Granola. And Granola sees that Vegeta is uh, trying to sneak up behind him. Turns his hand around. He tries to blast him. And Vegeta dodges. And this is important because this is not just a normal dodge that he's trying to do. He's actually doing this. Okay. Everyone's trying to dodge punches on purpose, but he has a um, plan with this. As we see the blast go past Vegeta, we find out that Vegeta purposefully positioned himself so that when the blast was missed, it would blow up the ruins of Granola's um, history of his people the one that the saiyans blew up so so then yeah the entire um ruins of the village decimated uh vegeta mocks him like oh you're fine with blowing up what's left of your city all of those precious memories and granola gets pissed and um vegeta remarks that i can tell that you just got your um power and granola granola's like how do you know that and Vegeta just simply says, well, thanks for confirming what I thought. Um, you're not used to your power. You're lacking experience. And Vegeta dashes right towards Granola. And uh, Granola tries to punch. Vegeta dodges. And um, Vegeta asks, um, what have you been doing with this power? Have you done any training? And Granola just blows him off saying there's no need. Um, witness my power and yeah um, and then Vegeta um, he gets um, kicked by Granola right in the gut and he says do I need to repeat myself uh, you may be stronger but that's no guarantee that he'll lose to him um, and what he does is he grabs um, 
he grabs Granola's leg and he tries to break his leg uh, with an elbow right on down. And um, it doesn't appear, it appear that it hurt, but it doesn't appear to actually have broken his leg. So, oh well, nice try. And, um, and um, they go back to the ground and um, Granola is stating that he's going to win because of all this power, kind of same old, same old. And Vegeta starts opening up um, about some stuff. And he says, um, he's talking about battles and um, the outcome is never quite set in stone. It's all about, um, and he loves fighting. And, um, and they keep going, they keep fighting again, but Vegeta's still talking. And he says, here's another tidbit, right? Uh, strongest, second strongest rankings are all well and good but they only reflect a moment in time. Once that moment has passed by, it's nothing but history. For me, for instance, I'm already stronger than I was a few minutes ago. So Vegeta makes a good point. You know, you you can't look at what someone did in the past or what they might do in the future. It's all about in the present whenever you're fighting. Vegeta says that he's grown more and more powerful throughout the, the fight of theirs. And Granola makes the remark that then he's just going to finish them off. And Granola does attack where he just he keeps his hands stiff and his fingers out. He's trying to, you know, pierce like Vegeta. But Vegeta catches his arm in the uh, in the middle of the attack to try to prevent it. And his fingertips just hit um, the armor um, that Vegeta is wearing and, and cracks it, makes a dent in it. But it's powerful enough to cause Vegeta to fall out of his um, transformation and spit up blood. And um, as we're sitting here, Vegeta's looking down and he starts laughing. And um, he, he makes a remark that what fun, this feeling that he's having, it's been ages since he last experienced it. There's no planet to protect, no people to save, just himself immersed in battle, his happy place. Grinnell is just kind of shocked by this. And Vegeta then says, just the thing to get a battle crazed sans blood pumping so Vegeta's going nuts right now and it's only about to just get more crazy granola instantly knowing that something is not good um takes a step back away from Vegeta and then all of a sudden Vegeta just is he's just powering up he is doing things that we have never seen he has an aura around him that looks like flames um a power key and it's just, it, it throws Granola back. And um, the scene is just, it's kind of surreal what we're looking at here. But Oil, um, and again, he, Oil was the, um, the guy from the Heater's crew, you know, the big tub of water guy. He's like, my gosh, they're, they're taking the battle all around the, the map. And um, then it goes back to Goku, who is, um, looking in the direction of where they're fighting and they're beyond a mountain far away from Goku. And Goku makes the remark that Vegeta's key just changed and it feels like God key, but not just any old God key. Then it goes back to Vegeta and you just gotta, you gotta see this photo or this photo, this drawing of um, Vegeta's transformation here of what's going on. Granola's on the ground, just kind of in shock. And just these flames are just engulfing this huge power scaling that's occurring. And Granola sensing danger just starts blasting um, key blasts into where Vegeta is. And it does absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden the, uh, the flames subside and we see Vegeta now. Um, he, um, all the blood that he had, all the scratches around his face have disappeared. Um, he gets a, um, his hair is, um, it's stiff black, uh, very slick, and um, his eyes change, and his eyebrows change, kind of to mimic the Super Saiyan 3 look of Goku, um, and and his, he just, he's just ripped now, and he still has these flames circling his body, and uh, he, he says to, um, um, to granola a god of destruction taught me that power derived solely from instinct is unbounded and that is a 
that's where the chapter ends. And now, for note, uh, the next chapter is going to come out August 18th. So not the typical 20th, but the 18th uh, for us to see what this new form, this new God of Destruction Vegeta form um, that some people are calling this and uh, what is about to happen. So, uh, Martin, where do you want to start? Uh, I guess with, uh, just to work our way, because we don't officially know the name of Vegeta's new form yet. I know that they'll probably have some God of Destruction because we're assuming it's God of Destruction key, as Goku alluded to, but we have no official name yet, and we'll probably get that from them soon. Um, if people remember in uh, Super, when Vegeta went to Super Saiyan uh, Blue Evolution, people were calling it random names, and then uh, they came out with the official name. But Mitch, I want to start, I guess, with the beginning mid part of the fight. I don't know about you, but also just want to make sure we clarify when Vegeta transformed, I'm assuming he went Super Saiyan Blue Evolution or manga perfected Super Saiyan Blue. Um, this kind of, it kind of a little bit reminded me of Vegeta versus Jiren the first time, because honestly, I have no idea how Vegeta was not one-shotted against the full power, like, Granola when he was able to take out MUI Goku. And MUI Goku is stronger than Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta. Did that, did that bring you to, did you think of that at all a little bit? I didn't think about it too much. It was just, um, I just thought, yeah, you know, Vegeta would have to. There, there's no point in Vegeta not going um, 100%, you know, at, well, at the time of reading that. So, I mean, he, yeah, he had to go Super Saiyan Blue Evolution because mm-hmm. there's just, there's no point in any, doing anything else because as we've seen, MUI. It's the it's 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 the best transformation out there. Now we'll see about that, but uh yeah, I was yeah, I just thought that he needed to do that. Yeah, so that was just one of the things. And obviously when they were like fighting and Vegeta and Granola was having the better of him throughout the fight, but Vegeta, man, he was and he I felt he I felt like he was very tactical. I really thought that like the Goku Jared fight where he got to watch, I feel like he benefited from watching Goku and Granola because he was able to know about like Granola's pressure point stuff and like some of his, I don't want to say weaknesses because Vegeta investigated that city first. So he was able to use that to his advantage. And when Granola shot that city, I feel like that made Granola more irrational because he was, he's, Betrayed as a rational fighter, but now he's irrational, which leads to mistakes. So I think that was really cool and smart of Vegeta's talk. To what Vegeta was alluding to, that he doesn't have experience. You know, he's not Mm battle-hardened. Because um, they, like Goku and Vegeta, they could probably get past, like, a situation like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, I mean, when... Um, now, you know, the thing is, is that uh, Vegeta doing that could have risked, um, you know, Granola actually kind of flipping shit because yeah. Saiyans have had histories of, you know, bad stuff happening to um, people that maybe they care about or whatnot. And then all of a sudden they go Super Saiyan, mm-hmm. you know, uh, G- Goku did it when Krillin died. Uh, Broly did it whenever um, one Paragus got killed in the movie, and um, it's it's not turned out good for the antagonist. So Vegeta just basically got lucky that yeah he allowed um, Granola to blow up his home, but <laughs> I mean I don't know if I would have but uh, allowed that to happen because I I don't know I, you don't know this guy you. you Goku and Vegeta have known Granola for 20 minutes. So it's like, <laughs> that, that's, pretty, that's pretty ballsy for someone who's battle-hardened. But on the flip side, it it, it, tur- it worked out in his favor. He got, got kind of pissed off. Probably wasn't all that, uh, wasn't as efficient with his fighting and 
Vegeta just pointed that out. So, yeah, it was kind of funny. I think also, too, with Vegeta, what you brought up about him, like, saying you just learned how to use this power, and he's like, how do you know? And Vegeta's like, well, thanks for confirming. My thing also with that page is, like, did he beat Goku that bad that Goku didn't realize that this guy just learned how to use his powers? Or is like, doesn't know how to use them yet? Because Vegeta realizing it in, like, their first encounter, and Goku, I mean, got a couple of rounds in with them, so it's like, why didn't Goku realize that? Well, Goku did make the remark, if I remember, um, you know, whenever before or like right at the moment when we found out it was a clone and he's like, Mm -hmm. why don't you train or something like that? So maybe Goku had an idea, but just Goku's not. Vegeta says that to piss him off, you know, because Vegeta likes to get under your skin mentally. And, you know, um, Vegeta's a troll, um, but Goku, Goku's not just trying to piss. he's, He's just not into He's not the character to to just piss you off. So, well, to push back on that though, they both. I mean, Goku. They realized that when they fought against Frieza in the movie, that Frieza rushed there without training with his form, and Goku was the one who said it first and realized it. And that's when Vegeta wanted to jump in, but Goku's like, "No, you just want to jump in because you know Frieza's weakness." Now, so he has done it recently. Well, Frieza is a jerk. They've had they had history with Frieza, so maybe maybe Goku even said, "I don't care. I hate this guy. Screw him. I'm gonna piss him off." But no, you make a good point there. They did. Uh, they did uh, have to say the same thing for Frieza. And I guess Vegeta also said that. I don't know if he he kind of said similar lines too when he fought against Broly because he was just like. He's like still learning, like he's learning how to use his speed and power and all that. And, He's learning as he fights. Yeah, which is very dangerous with him. But no, like seeing Vegeta, I mean, giving his, he he gave some pretty good lines, especially about what we talked about, I think months ago, the, uh, it's on page 36 to 37, about the rankings are all good, but they're, they reflect a moment in time. And once that moment passed, those rankings are nothing but history. So mm-hmm. like, I really like that because we talked about this, like when he wished to be the strongest, is he always going to be like the strongest, no matter what anyone gets, or is he whoever the two, the strongest people were at that time of the wish, he's stronger than them. But those people kept training and in this case, Goku and Vegeta. Yeah. Yep. I am. uh, I'm in an agreement with that. It was, it was, Vegeta had some really good dialogue. What I like about what I like about that line, and I and I hope this gets to the community or just Dragon Ball fans in general, and that is that line needs to be understood regarding all past villains. Because everyone thinks that if Cell came around, for example, he would get stomped and it would it would be no contest. But the thing is, is that like you have to you have to remember like that's that's what their strength was when we saw them last if these people like frieza for example frieza came back after being revived he trained for a short amount of time and he covered the gap between four months um, when he could only compete against a super saiyan one all the way up until a super saiyan blue so it's like so when some people are like when we discuss, you know, um, can they bring back an old villain again? And then some people are like, no, because they would get stomped uh, before even the title of the chapter came out. Um, no, no. Um, Vegeta makes a remark here that, you know, you can be strong then, but it's all about what it's all about right now. So I liked it. I like the guy. I hope that uh, that's um, something to come in the future in terms of maybe seeing some other enemies come back. Um, Cause I don't, I don't, I don't mind like an enemy coming back if it's done properly. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Mitch, okay. hold, that, hold that thought on the uh, enemy coming back. We're going to hit that actually after we're done reviewing this chapter. Okay. And then you go to, I think 39, 
through the rest of the chapters when you get the great pictures. I mean, when Vegeta's saying the what fun and like you get that, uh, it's on page 41 to 40 with Vegeta saying that's the thing that gets a battle craze sans blood pumping. That picture is super menacing. And I really hope that uh, I, I know it's sacrilegious when eventually Super gets animated. They can get the rules like Z did and have some blood because that picture is not going to look the same without any blood. No, no, it it need it it, it needs the blood um, to make that scene because I mean I mean they put so much detail in Vegeta like you know the blood coming out of the mouth as you said the veins popping out of his uh, on his uh, forehead on his cheek and then his eyes like <laughs> they add um, blood vessels. Um, um, in his in his eyes, it's not just you know the white circles of everyone's eyes. Um, he has shadowing around his eyes. I mean, Vegeta is this is demonic borderline. Yeah, it's and that's it's awesome. Good, that was a good thing too, because Vegeta's line too that really got me too at the top was like, "There's no plan to protect, no people to save," and like it's just them in battle. And when he said it's been a long time, I'm I'm not gonna. I'm going to speak for Vegeta. I think he's referring to the last time he got a fight like that was him versus Goku in the Buu saga. When there was, yeah. It was just the two of them. Nothing else mattered until Buu got hatched. Because right now, I mean, he's right. These guys have been... He's been fighting either to protect the planet or save people since... Shit. Since really the Buu saga... I mean, you could say Cell, he was still a little little on the super arrogant side till Cell blasted Trunks, then that's when the change happened. But, like, because they've been protecting the planet, so they've always had to hold back people in the vicinity, moving places, always having to think about the people or some sort of that. So right now, like, when you just know you just have to beat the guy and, like, you just fight and there's no, like, real consequences, I mean, that's been, like, an uplifting thing for him. You said the demonic thing, which made me think about like him going back to the Majin Vegeta stage. But I mean, the thing that everyone wants to hear our thoughts on, because it was leaked a couple of days ago. No one wanted to. No one wanted to be the person to confirm if it was real or fake, because you know, if you give fake stuff out in the Dragon Ball community, you are going to get roasted for a long time. And yeah. it was Vegeta's transformation. And the only reason I bring up the Vegeta versus Jiren thing is like. Granola, on, when Vegeta starts transforming or talking like that, he's like, oh my gosh, what's happening? But you know, you just see a humanoid angel in Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku, and you're just like, mm, whatever. Just reminding of me when Jiren blocked Vegeta's final flash, but just stood there against a freaking spirit bomb. Made no yeah. sense. But anyway, man, like you said, with the aura, like the drawings, <laughs> the transformation's real, man. Like, what are your thoughts on? This transformation and what it looks like in so, you know, it's Dragon Ball power scaling wise, we ha we haven't seen what it can do yet. But what are you thinking about this? So a couple things. Um, the first thing we'll talk about is visuals. Um, overall, um, I'm I'm giving it like an eight or nine out of ten just mm -hmm. on visualization. Vegeta's you know muscles are defined, toned. He looks badass. He looks very strong. Um, his aura, which are flames all around him, um, freaking sweet. Um, I don't know how I feel that he has no eyebrows, mm -hmm. um, that he looks like Super Saiyan 3. Um, that's my only, I mean, it doesn't look bad. I don't have, like, but I just, I mean, it, it is literally his Super Saiyan 3 look. Yeah, um, so I mean, making up for lost time. Yeah, just, you know, you got to remove somebody's eyebrows, I guess. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, visually looks sweet um the the next thing i wasn't actually trying to think of like power scaling in terms of like where he stands because i still i mean it, 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 i don't know if this changes the pecking order because i i would still think mui is stronger or like better to have once fully completely mastered um but on the flip side um this could just have its own uh, techniques and special um, abilities that we'll see, but um, we just need the next chapter to um, 
to discuss that. But the th- the third thing that I was really trying to think of is how did Vegeta get to this point? So, um, cause we, we know we saw him training with Beerus, but there was no, we didn't know that he was actually going to have another transformation. We just thought he learned how to Hakai. And, um, but so, um, I, I'm, I'm cool with that. But, um, what I was trying to think of is why was Vegeta getting stronger as the fight was progressing? You know, um, and the things that I was noticing, you know, I mean, Vegeta's getting his ass kicked is what I'm going to describe it as. Mm-hmm. And he almost gets destroyed um, whenever he, he gets hit in the stomach there, even though he tried to dodge it. And then he fell out of his transformation. And then after that moment of almost being destroyed, then he transforms into, as we'll just say for this um, podcast um, or tonight. Yeah. Is that he's, you know, God of destruction, Vegeta. And I'm thinking, I'm like, is this is familiar. This is, this is somewhat familiar. And, um, and then it dawned on me that this is, similar than to what happened to Topo in the anime because Topo was, you know, fighting Android 17, mm-hmm. big ass blast uh, beam struggle that they had. Vegeta came or Frieza came up behind Topo completely rocked his world. And then he got rocked back again by um, 17's uh, blast since he couldn't hold it back. And um, Granola or Topo was just, um, you know, he was just sitting there and in the middle of the ring, uh, borderline almost dead to the point where, you know, Krillin and the others, I think even Weiss had mentioned that, like, they were surprised that Topo was even still in the tournament. Um, then that was whenever Topo, on the verge of being destroyed, says, or well, he just transforms into God of Destruction Topo. Um, so maybe that's a thing with you know God of Destruction transformations. Is that to you know to I guess unlock it? Like, do you have to be on the verge of being destroyed? You know, because that would be like sort of ironic to be a God of Destruction. You have to almost be destroyed. Um, two things on that. One. That's good on you to make that comparison because when he was talking about he was getting stronger, I was thinking about the typical San, like Zenkai boost um, ordeal yeah. thing. I was thinking of that, but good on you with that. And with the destruction part, I don't want to necessarily say destroyed because I guess if you're comparing it to like Tournament of Power stuff, remember at that point, Goku was only going into UI when he was getting his ass whooped. Like he wasn't yeah. able to do it on his own i would i guess topo would because literally his god um angel said that's what they trained for but i'm just thinking of that too because like every time goku went ui in there is when he was way past his limits he should have been down so maybe this is the similar thing because i guess on the power scaling thing i was almost thinking of this as like god of destruction like black haired like comparing it to like black haired ui omen like this isn't like the final form of god of destruction that makes sense yeah i think there'll be more like how goku has black hair to silver hair i think this is like omen version omen god of destruction that's what i think this is right now then lord if there's something else after this (laughs) i I think there would because just because goku has we learned in the beginning of this saga that there's multiple levels of MUI, and if we're going to continue this track of them being different, there probably is going to be multiple levels of destruction. And I think there is because also remember when probably one of the best moments in the anime when Frieza broke out of that destruction ball. There is no way if that was Beerus's ball that Frieza would have broke out. So there has to be levels to this destruction power. Yeah, that, that 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 makes pretty good sense. That makes that's a pretty that's a pretty good point that you made. So yeah, I, I mean, because with the people, I mean, we're Vegeta fans, but I don't, I don't think he's stronger than MUI Goku. I think, I think if roles were reversed and MUI Goku saw what Granola could do first, I think MUI Goku probably could have beat him, unless Granola's still holding back, which he could. But 
No, man, this picture at the last page of Vegeta, I mean, this literally set the DB world in a frenzy because nobody knew yeah, if it was real or fake. A, uh, like, sent the world to flames. You yeah. know? He was trending really on Twitter, everything. You know, but, yeah, but it did. And um, I was... I was kind of surprised that um, that the leak even came out because yeah. I, I forget who it was. Who did I um, see had the had the original leak? I, I I don't know if it was a geek or if it was Unreal or no 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 no. no it was um, that Dragon Ball Super Twitter? That's what you yeah. Said it was you got the Dragon Ball first. Super Twitter, which um, for anyone listening, it's an unofficial um dragon ball super dragon ball uh, franchise um twitter page and all they do is they uh they retweet a lot of the uh community stuff so um shout out to them um they they will um retweet our podcast when we do about dragon ball and a lot of artwork a lot of discussions they just they're just all about it and um they had retweeted that um a popular or a um not a popular a um proven or a trustworthy i think it was a a naruto or Mm -hmm. what's the other series of naruto the current one boruto Um, yeah boruto um uh, there was a person that does those leaks for for them um and trustworthy leaked to this one so um not everyone was 100% sure if it was real. It it looked pretty legit. So, um, and then just before we know it, just all the signs were pointing that this was true. So, uh, um, I'm just surprised that there even was a leak. But I wonder if there will be any sort of leaks for the um, for the next chapter, especially since it comes two days early. Will they just you know keep it hush hush and uh, We'll have to wait and see. So. I think I think the pushback with the leak also is because the leak was the transformation. Like again, like if you weren't thinking, like where the hell did Vegeta get this transformation from? You would think it was some fa- fan manga, but then like once it got confirmed, you're like, oh, I mean, it, it got the buzz up for the chapter, all right? Because everyone's like, holy hell, Vegeta has a new transfer transformation, and I know people are like, well, where the hell did this come from? Things like that. Do you remember this isn't the first time Vegeta pulled a transformation out of his butt that we didn't see? Remember, like, we didn't see him training with Whis when he, like, really got Super Saiyan God and Blue. We still yeah. don't even know how he got God, per se, but he just showed up with the Frieza thing and went Blue, and, and we were just, and Goku's like, yeah, he did it all by himself. Obviously, yeah, pure grind is yeah. what, you know, it's like, really? All right, whatever. So, I mean, it's the same thing. He got red and blue. In that time period, and now he has this in the whatever time they had trained with beers. And then obviously, anime wise, uh, super even though he had to have something to match KO Ken times 20 Super Saiyan Blue, evolution was pulled too. Like that came out of nowhere. Because yeah. no so it's not the first time. And it, I mean, the last time Vegeta's transformation was explained was Dragon Ball GT with the blood waves of how to get to Super Saiyan 4. Yeah. So yeah. This this is wild, man. Because I really thought Vegeta was going to get killed. Like I I thought Goku was going to have to step back, and because I was like, there's no way Baby Hakai's are going to do anything against this guy, and he pulls out a transformation that completely healed on himself, which is wild. And we're going to see what he can he can do. And I honestly think Vegeta's going to get the upper hand, and finally. It's time for our boy Gas to show up. What in the hell is Gas going to do? He's going to do something. I'm, dude, they're saving Gas. Like he has something. Dude, Gas, Gas is. I'm going to make a WWE reference here. Shout out to Jacob and uh, uh, you and Martin and everyone else. <laughs> but this is like this. Would this is like if you knew. Whoever whoever had the briefcase for money in the bank, mm-hmm. you knew that they were about to cash in right at the end of this this fight between these uh, two for the belt. But mm-hmm. you knew you knew that whenever that cash in comes, they were going to win. Like there was no okay, is Biggie going to cash mm-hmm. in and lose? 
lose it? No, 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 no. This is Biggie's going to cash it, and he's going to win it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a good. That's a good uh, point. It's just like my biggest concern with gas because we were actually this was before we had our podcast, but we were the first to say that other people started picking on it. A uh, tournament of power. Your man from Universe 4, who we were like, this dude is unafraid of nothing. And then turned out to be a dud. The Universe little guy. Four is pathetic. You know who I'm talking about, that little guy, blue guy. No, Rat, Rat Man, whatever his name is. No, not Rat Man. He was the blue guy. He was blue. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about the guy of destruction. He's no, sucked. no. Little no, blue but, dude. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He um he did the illusion. Yeah, because he wasn't like, go. Jiren was powering up, didn't move. Like, he never moved, and we were all like, dude, everyone, watch out for this guy. Like, he might be freaking legit. Just look at the signs, and then it was the biggest dud. That was the craziest. That, that, that was my craziest, um, like, hopeful theory that I think I've ever had, thinking that that little run from Universe 4 was going to F everyone up. <laughs> but he, bro, he was showing the signs. It's the fact that they highlighted him and he was unafraid. He was. And they didn't show him once. They didn't show him twice. They showed him on like four different occasions where he was, he he just thought he was king shit on Turd Island. And, and, then, and then they had the entire episode. Cause I, you know, I couldn't think that Jiren was the, like in Universe 11. Like they were the only badasses, you know, because <laughs> at the time... It was just them. Everyone else was just kind of scrubby. Um, yeah, and then, you know, when the universe, um, you know, a three, whenever they showed up, you know, the strong robots and all that crap. Okay, cool. They had um, their two but episodes. yeah, it was, <laughs> God, goodness gracious. And, yeah. and then they had the one episode where the entire, all of universe four, except for like two people that got their ass kicked at the beginning of the tournament of the power, <laughs> the whole chat, that whole episode mm-hmm. was about getting rid of universe four. and. It was it was embarrassing. That's what but, I thought. That's what I thought of that. But no, man, this is coming out on the 18th. I mean, the the hypes are always real after the chapters. But again, you're ending it, especially in Dragon Ball, on a new transformation. So the hype is going to be super real. And to just connect to the next thing, Mitch, I honestly think they did this on purpose because to talk about another topic, real Comic Con is this week, and the Dragon Ball movie panel is supposed to be there. Yeah. So I think they perfectly crafted this that you end on a transformation. You have the panel coming. You have the Jap- You're flying the Japanese voice actor of Goku to San Diego Comic-Con. So there has to be, you can't be, even during COVID, and she's not a spring chicken. So for you guys to be doing that, there has to be something big getting announced this weekend. Do you think we could get a trailer? We have to movie? get something. Or for the anime. I don't want to say the anime coming back. That was supposed to come back like three years ago. Either a trailer for the movie. And now remember the first trailer for when Broly came out. Mm -hmm. Before we even knew that was Broly. Like, oh, and everyone very short. Mm -hmm. You know, it just showed Goku just. Just. Yeah, it didn't show much, but. uh, Oh, he was just out in the in the snowy mountains and. They had some close-up zooms of Broly just for you to speculate who who it was. So well, we might get that, but it, I, I don't think we'll get both. I think we'll get one, either the movie or the anime. Two things. One, remember back when we were like, is that Broly? And all the top-tier um, YouTubers are like, no, you're an idiot. It's Yamoshi, blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. the little trailer happened. It was Broly. I was like, this is awkward because you guys all said it's not Broly. So this is a lot awkward. That, that was that was that was that was tough because uh, that, that came out at the same time as mm-hmm. uh, with the panel with Toriyama, wherever he he mentioned that the first Saiyan was named ooh, I, Yamoshi. It, it doesn't even matter. It's like because like I like I sit there and think that if if it's not like actually like shown. Like if it's not in an anime, if it's not in a manga, then when when these when these journalists or interviewers ask Toriyama these questions, I think he just says shit to get people to shut up. Yeah. Because like, like whenever he sat down at that panel and then he gave seventeen and eighteen actual names, 
I don't think he gave a hot shit. Like, just like, mm-hmm. just like, okay, I have been asked this question for 10 years. Screw it. Here's their names, whatever they are. And it's just. No, I, I agree with you. And then my second thing is, what do you want? Do you want movie trailer or do you want return of the anime announcement this week? Anime. Because you know, whatever it, it, you know, when their panel, when their time is, the whole DB community is going to be on pins and needles. I think I want an anime. Anime. Because um, the movie's going to come. We have that confirmation. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, I don't have a date. I don't have an exact date of when the movie is, but I know it's coming. Like, actually, confirm 100%. I know there's a movie coming. For the anime, though, I have, like, 99.9% sure that the anime is coming. I have no idea when, and I'm not 100% sure. So, an anime would get me more hyped. And, but but then the thing is, too, if they give us a date as to when the anime will yeah. kick back up, then that um, that, for me, then might signal when the end of this arc would be. Mm-hmm. Um, because I would feel as though if they had two arcs um, ahead of the anime, then they could pace the anime with the manga better than what they did the first go around. Whenever the anime outpaced the manga, now, and then both of them had great ideas, but they kind of suffered for it. So. Yeah, they were different. Now, would you rather want because? They're coming. They just released some new DLC. Would you rather want anime or the first trailer for Xenoverse 3? Jesus. Crimey. Oh, my God. Um, Because anything's possible with this one. They're bringing in... The fact that they're bringing in Goku makes it seem like anything is really possible. Dude, that's a tough one. That's tough. Do I want anime or new Dragon Ball Xenoverse? And they both get really... Like, they'll both give you the date. Oh man! Because oh, I mean, man, two is releasing more DLC. They just unveiled they're doing Tournament of Power, as me and you call him, Jiren Red. He's coming out, and Omen's coming out. So it's like they're still going, but Comic Con would be a place. And you have the voice actor of Goku announce new game, end of twenty twenty one, Xenoverse three. Xenoverse, I would say Xenoverse three, and here's why: when the anime comes out. The anime is going to, you know, kind of mirror the manga. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm I'm basically just going to get the same story that we've read just on television, which will be sweet. That, yeah. Let's not take away from that. When Xenoverse comes out, though, that's a nut. That's a brand new story because they're going to incorporate a whole bunch of shit. We're going to see we would see Moro in a video game and Granola in the mm-hmm. video game. Mm-hmm. The heaters probably, you know, and uh, that would be sweet. I mean, they can incorporate more things. They could actually do what we are thinking what's going to be in the next arc. You can have uh, Universe 7 heroes, universe hopping. Like, yep. you can be going to different universes exploring. Because I'm just sitting here and, like, I'm still looking at this picture of Vegeta. Man, what the hell is everyone else training right now? Because I know I sent the text with you, like, if Gogeta ever comes back, who is beating him? And the only thing I can jokingly say is that people in Universe 1. Because <laughs> remember, their mortal rating was ridiculously high. Yeah, I'd love to see who's over there. I mean, that, that's the thing. That's your, your average mortal. And, uh, the, what, I can't even remember how high that number was. It was like 12 or 13. And like, Universe seven was like at a three or four Mm -hmm. so i mean you're top tier guys in universe one have to be able to put people up like and then then those are the only people but as as for looking at the actual like established characters that we have we we's is the only person in my eyes or an angel an angel is the only person that is that is beating um, a who's winning in a fight against Gogeta or Vegito right now. If, MUI, God of Destruction, Force Spirit Fishing, Fish Fishing, Gogeta. I mean, 
If you wow. ever, ever get that Gogeta or Vegito in a video game, there's I, I wouldn't even waste my time <laughs> with other characters or any other skill except getting that fusion off. Because it, it, it has to. It, it would be like it'd be like Gogeta Super Saiyan 4 against like Omega Shenron. Mm-hmm. Like in terms of dominance, it just it would be just completely OP. Some some people said with the black hair, this is some you know random people like, oh, this is the start of potentially getting Super Saiyan 4 in Super Yeah, I don't I don't think that's happening. I don't I wouldn't what I mean, a snooze was, fest. Yeah, even though that is my favorite transformation, I was like, eh, I don't think this would that's just a cop out because it's the black hair we're seeing but i can't wait to see this picture colored out to actually see what it looks like what color do you think the flames will be they have to be purple yeah i feel like i feel like purple um yeah because super saiyan was yellow super saiyan if it, if yellow it was like purple blue purple and blue i think that would that would that would look good i think that'd be good too I also I also find it funny how every time Vegeta gets like his own thing, like like Super Vegeta, Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, like he gets like bigger in a sense. But this one he wasn't like big like trunks, ultra trunks big. But I was just like mm, they always they, they stick to that with Vegeta. But now nah, man, it's it's good. Uh, another debate that I've seen is. Which form do you like of new Vegeta's forms do you like better so far? This one or the one he got in Dragon Ball Heroes? Hero, heroes. Um, what, what, the, what are we calling that one? Uh, Super Saiyan Blue Berserker or something? Yeah, with the blue and black and the lightning. And his eyes change too. The same eye changes. He still has eyebrows, but like the same pupil thing that he has right now. Um, in terms of visuals, Berserker. Yeah. Berserker is just it's just sweet. He has and again like going back like I, I he, he has his eyebrows. Um his eyes are still shaded. Um the, you know they got the blue and the black going on and then his aura is the super saiyan blue but it's outlined um Vegeta's body is outlined in or, a black aura and it's it's just sick. It's so good. Um, I almost think that should have been the, you know, God of Destruction Vegeta form, his Hakai Hakai form, whatever we want to call it. Me, me too, because it kind of matches his family thing. Because if you remember Super Saiyan Rage, it was like the yellow and like trunks had like the blue inside them. Yep. So it kind of matched the family thing. But just to say a quick thing on heroes, the picture of MUI Goku and Berserker Vegeta side by side that that's a top tier picture. Dude, how in the hell? Okay. For we, we don't we don't talk about heroes all too much. Uh, you guys should be watching. Should. It's only ten minutes a month, and they got some good stuff going. But that 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 podcast would just last. And the thing is, the story doesn't even make sense. But nope. oh well. <laughs> it's just it's just a whole bunch of hot shit. It's it's whose line is it anyway when points don't matter and everything's made up. But um, but um, Goku Blank is back, and he just turned Super Saiyan three Rose. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how the hell does Super Saiyan 3 Rose have any chance against MUI and Berserker Vegeta? <laughs> just, well, I mean, I don't know, but we did joke about like if Super Saiyan Blue, because that's technically Super Saiyan 1 was Super Saiyan God, really. If we were going to get upgrades to 2 and 3 and Goku Black said, well, I'm going to do it my way too. But it's like, I, I don't know, man, because... I don't know how Super Saiyan Broly was hand, uh, beating Super Saiyan Blues. It doesn't make sense. But no, here well, is... Remember, it's, remember it's though, um, Broly, um, Dragon Ball Z Broly in Heroes is fighting against... Is it Super Saiyan 4 Vegito? He was. Like, I thought he... And yeah, and then like... There, yeah, and then like... Yeah, and then at the end, so even that power scaling makes no sense. Um, but okay. I think with Heroes this past episode, it was very similar to like the Moro arc. Like those demons sent Goku and Vegeta to the Spirit of Time so that they can master their new powers and forms. And then they come back in their new powers and forms. And you're just like, 
this is kind of like what they did against Moro and kind of what they're doing against Granola. Like, I wonder if they're going to have the side by side shot. I don't, that'd be a little, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I'm glad Cell's back. That, that's kind of what I alluded to like mm-hmm. earlier, whenever you know Cell's going to be strong. Heroes has no problem bringing back weaklings, mm-hmm. making them stupid strong for no reason. When you got Turles eating fruit from the tree of might still competing against Super Saiyan Blue, it's whatever. But I mean, it makes for an interesting story. Uh, the one thing, though, about Heroes that I, I would want to mention, though, is that how did okay Goku Black says that he traveled across a hundred different timelines and killed a hundred different Gokus, learning mm-hmm. all of Goku's techniques, his moves, mm-hmm. trying to perfect his own understanding of Goku's body that he has. But he never came across one that had like ultra instinct. I mean, did he ever yeah. come across one that had Super Saiyan 4? Because they showed some flashes of what he did, and they were. They were all Dragon Ball Z Gokus. Oh, I mean, this Goku. might be controversial, but I'm going to go on record. I, I think he would have got smoked if he would have ran into Super Saiyan 4 Goku. I think, yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I, yeah, it goes back to what's stronger, 4 or blue. Um, I think because I like it more, I'm going to say 4, <laughs> but I don't have any numbers. I don't have any analytics for you. But Just, I guess in the point of time is like, it depends on when he's killing these Gokus. Is he showing up right before Krillin gets blown up by Frieza, then killing him there and leaving? Like, we don't know the well, exact times he's doing it. Well, he at least had to kill a Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Let alone he showed it. That's how he transformed into Rose. That is true. That's true. So it has to be at least after Boo. And speaking of Boo, again, with Vegeta's uh, Berserk transformation, I love how he referenced, like, all that he's done and, like, him remembering, like, Goku versus Boo, because Goku was the catalyst. Like, that was the final catalyst to push him into that transformation. Yeah. So, I mean, it was that was good stuff. But, man, it, it's this manga, manga chapter and Comic-Con. This is a big week for Dragon Ball. I don't think it's had this big a week in, like, a long time. And with the potential movie announcement or anime coming back announcement, we're yeah. going to be the first one to throw it out there. Maybe video game announcement? like. This weekend, Dragon Ball is going to take over something of social media this weekend, one way or the other. Yep, it is. So keep your eyes open. There's going to be a lot that's coming up. Mitch, anything else you want to talk about, man, before we sign up? We talked about Comic-Con, talked about the chapter, Vegeta's forms, heroes, anything else? Nope. Uh, nothing that nothing that I can think of that. And wraps up about everything for me. How about yourself? No, I think that wraps up everything for me. It's just waiting for the weekend to see what we get. Amen. That, that's all. That's all it is. Just waiting to get that notification that, hey, we're getting a movie. We're getting the show back. And I, I hope we can um, get it simulcast. Um, for those who don't know, that means you get it dubbed and subbed at the same time. So. Hopefully we can do that because, you know, dub was way behind than the sub was. So hopefully we get that. That'd be real cool. And it'll bring the excitement back with the anime of uh, everyone trying to watch it on San Army's uh, Facebook. Shout out to him. I mean, they were they were real ones for posting him as soon as they came out. Not even waiting for translations. Yep. 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 Uh, with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. Thank you, Mitch, for being on. For the hardcore Dragon Ball fans, remember, as Mitch said earlier, August 18th is when we get the chapter. So we're going to get to see what Vegeta can do. And I already know how that chapter is going to be because everyone's going to try and power scale him to see where he stands after seeing some moves. And remember, Comic Con is this weekend. They're bringing the all stars for the panel. They're not bringing the all-stars to welcome in the scrubs. So there's going to be something big announced. So get ready for that. And with that being said, this is the L7C podcast uh, signing out. Have a good night. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms. And we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.